construction recently began in one of the most remote places on the planet on a project of absolutely insane scale, costing $167 billion. Chinese authorities call this the project of the century, but this facility has already caused mass panic, and people are even talking about a possible catastrophe for all of Asia. We're talking about the world's largest hydroelectric power station. Its capacity will exceed the famous Three Gorges Dam by three times. Energy production will be comparable to several dozen nuclear power plants. But while Beijing talks about green energy and technological triumph, scientists around the world are sounding the alarm because they're building the dam on a river that millions of people in several countries depend on in a region with the highest seismic activity on territory where slopes are on the verge of collapse. On January 17, 2025, just a few months before construction began, a powerful earthquake struck Tibet, and scientists discovered that a series of catastrophic mega-floods created the gorge where they're building the dam. The last such flood occurred just 25 years ago and claimed dozens of lives. India officially lodged a protest. Bangladesh expressed serious concern. Environmentalists warn of a threat to the unique Himalayan ecosystem. And Chinese authorities have classified all project data. What's actually happening in the mountains of Tibet? Why could the construction of one dam ruin life for two billion people in Asia? Why are they building the dam in exactly the place where scientists discovered traces of ancient catastrophic floods that literally carved out the deepest gorge on the planet? What will happen to the new hydroelectric station if a strong earthquake occurs? And finally, could this dam become not a symbol of progress, but a ticking time bomb capable of causing a continental scale catastrophe? Stay until the end of the video. The information is truly fascinating. So in spring 2025, Construction began in one of the most remote corners of the planet that Chinese authorities call the project of the century. We're talking about a giant hydroelectric power station in Tibet, costing $167 billion. To understand the scale, this is more than the annual GDP of Hungary or Morocco. China's prime minister stated that the new hydroelectric station will become a symbol of the country's technological might. The facility received the name Motuo, or alternatively, Maydog. The dam will produce 300 billion kilowatt hours of electricity per year. These are record numbers. Construction is taking place on the Yarlung Changpo River. This name means little to most people outside Asia, but this river has colossal significance for the entire region. The Yarlung Changpo is the highest major river on the planet. It begins on the Tibetan Plateau at an altitude of more than four kilometers above sea level. The river flows higher than the summit of Mont Blanc. It crosses the Tibetan Plateau, then plunges through the Himalayas and continues its path further south. There in India, it receives another name, Brahmaputra. Under this name, the river reaches Bangladesh, where it flows into the Bay of Bengal. The total length of this water artery is 2,500 kilometers. Millions of people in several countries depend on it. And it's precisely on this river, in its upper reaches, that China decided to build the world's largest dam. Naturally, the project has sparked mixed reactions. On one hand, Chinese leadership emphasizes that the country is actively developing renewable energy. The hydroelectric station produces no carbon dioxide emissions. It fits into the green transition strategy that the entire reasonable world is striving for. On the other hand, project details remain classified. Authorities aren't publishing a full environmental assessment, aren't reporting which territories exactly will be flooded, aren't disclosing data about reservoir volumes. All of this is classified for reasons of state importance. Such lack of transparency raises questions not only among environmentalists, but also among neighboring states. India and Bangladesh have already expressed serious concern. After all, what happens in the river's headwaters in Tibet directly affects the lives of people downstream. 
In theory, Beijing will gain the ability to regulate how much water flows into India and Bangladesh. This turns the water artery into a potential tool of political influence. Bangladesh is especially vulnerable. The delta of the Brahmaputra and Ganges is one of the most densely populated territories on the planet. Tens of millions of people depend on these rivers. Any change in the water regime could lead to massive consequences. But beyond geopolitical disputes, other issues exist. This is territory with unique and very complex geology. The river flows through one of the deepest gorges on the planet. In some places, the depth reaches almost two kilometers. The slopes are so steep that they're on the verge of collapse, and the river itself rushes at tremendous speed. Scientists from various countries have studied this region for decades, and what they discovered makes one think about the consequences of building such a massive dam precisely here. On January 17th, 2025, just a few months before dam construction began, a powerful earthquake struck Tibet. The epicenter sat several hundred kilometers from the future hydroelectric station site. This is no coincidence. The region sits in one of the most seismically active zones on the planet. The reason is the collision of two giant tectonic plates. The Indian plate continues pushing into the Eurasian plate. This very process created the Himalayas, the highest mountain system on Earth. And the process hasn't ended. The mountains continue to rise, the plates continue to collide, stress accumulates, and from time to time releases in the form of earthquakes. Chinese geologist Yang Yong is one of the few experts who openly criticized the project and points to several serious problems. First, the danger of landslides. The slopes in the Tsangpo Gorge are so steep that any earthquake could trigger the collapse of huge masses of rock directly into the reservoir. A giant wave would form that could overflow the edge or even damage the structure itself. The consequences for territories downstream would be catastrophic. Second, the Chinese scientist warns about water supply unpredictability. Tibet's rivers are fed by glacier meltwater. In winter, many of them freeze. In summer, when glaciers actively melt, water flow sharply increases. In winter, at low water levels, energy production drops. In summer, conversely, they have to release excess water, losing potential energy. And in high altitude conditions, this is compounded by the risk of ice jams and sudden floods. Researchers from the University of Washington spent several years studying the Sangpo Gorge. They collected samples of sediment deposits, analyzed rock formations, studied the region's geological history. It turns out a series of catastrophic floods formed the Yarlung Tsangpo Gorge. Moreover, we're not talking about ordinary floods, but genuine mega floods. Here's how it worked. In the river's headwaters, upstream from the gorge, glaciers periodically created natural dams. Behind them, enormous volumes of water accumulated, turning into giant lakes. Sooner or later, the ice dam couldn't withstand the pressure. It would break apart. Water would burst out and rush down through the gorge with incredible speed and force. This created an avalanche effect. The gorge deepened and widened literally before one's eyes. And most importantly, this process hasn't ended. It continues to this day, just on a smaller scale. In 2000, quite recently by geological standards, an event occurred that vividly demonstrated the danger. A huge landslide created a natural dam on the Yigong River, a tributary of the Yarlung Changpo. Over several months, a gigantic volume of water accumulated behind the dam. In June of 2000, the dam burst. Water poured downstream. The flood led to numerous casualties and enormous material damage in populated areas downstream. And this was a natural dam made of rocks and earth that lasted only a few months. Now imagine an artificial dam tens of meters high. Behind it, a reservoir with a volume of billions of cubic meters. And all of this in a region where earthquakes occur regularly and slopes are on the verge of collapse. 
The process in the Sangpo Gorge resembles what happened with Lake Missoula in Montana, USA, 12,000 years ago. Back then, a glacier created a natural dam behind which a huge lake accumulated. When the dam burst, the water flow carved entire ridges in the eastern part of Washington state. And here's what's important to understand. Precisely such catastrophic events created the Sangpo Gorge, its shape, depth, the steepness of slopes. All of this is the result of millions of years of repeating mega floods. This isn't a calm plains river. This is a geological monster. Now China wants to build the world's largest dam here. This means creating yet another giant reservoir in the headwaters of this dangerous gorge, in a region with high seismic activity, on territory where landslides occur regularly. So hypothetically, what will happen if a strong earthquake occurs? History knows examples of dam catastrophes. In 1975 in China's Henan province, the Bankyao Dam collapsed. According to various estimates, between 100,000 and 200,000 people died. A wave of water up to 10 meters high rushed at a speed of 50 kilometers per hour, sweeping away everything in its path. In 1963 in Italy, a catastrophe occurred at the Vajant Dam. The dam itself held, but a huge landslide fell into the reservoir. A wave 200 meters high formed. It crashed down on cities downstream. Almost 2,000 people died. And these were ordinary dams in relatively calm geological conditions. But here, we're talking about the world's largest dam in one of the most dangerous places on the planet. Some experts draw parallels between the new project and China's Three Gorges Dam. That dam also sparked controversy. Environmentalists warned of danger. Authorities forced millions of people to relocate. But there's an important difference. The three gorges sit in a relatively stable geological region. Seismic activity there is moderate. The slopes aren't as steep. Conditions overall are more predictable. But China is building the Madog Dam in the Himalayas, where earthquakes are the norm, not the exception, where slopes are on the verge of collapse, where the river is fed by unpredictable glacier melting. Plus, there's another factor that makes the situation more alarming climate change. Himalayan glaciers are melting faster than ever in observational history. This means the river's regime is becoming increasingly unpredictable, summer floods are intensifying, winter flow, conversely, is decreasing. For the future hydroelectric station, this creates additional problems. But for the population downstream, this means a direct threat, more powerful floods, risks of sudden flooding. And all of this is happening against the backdrop of population growth in the region. Millions of people in India and Bangladesh live in the Brahmaputra Valley, and they depend directly on the river. For them, any change in the water regime is a matter of survival. India has already lodged an official protest. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Delhi expressed serious concern that China is building the world's largest dam on a transboundary river without consulting neighbors. Indian experts say control over the Brahmaputra's headwaters gives Beijing a powerful leverage tool. During the dry season, China can hold back water, exacerbating water supply problems in India. During the rainy season, they can open the floodgates, creating flood risk downstream. Bangladesh is in an even more vulnerable position. This country depends on the Brahmaputra and Ganges rivers almost completely. Any changes in the water regime could lead to a humanitarian catastrophe. Meanwhile, Bangladesh has no mechanisms to influence the situation. The country can only express concern and hope that China will act responsibly. Chinese authorities respond to criticism in standard fashion. They state that the project takes into account all environmental requirements, that measures will be taken to protect nature, that neighboring countries' interests won't suffer. But there are no specifics, no public reports, no detailed plans, no monitoring and control mechanisms. Everything is based on words and promises. Meanwhile, construction is proceeding at full speed. Equipment is already working in the valley. The project is gaining momentum. For China, this dam is not just an energy issue, 
It's a symbol of technological superiority, a symbol of control over a strategically important region. Of course, Tibet has enormous significance for the water security of all Asia. Control over the sources of these rivers means influence over half the planet's population. But as we know, the river recognizes no borders. Water trapped in the mountains of Tibet will sooner or later reach India and Bangladesh. And if something goes wrong, an earthquake, a landslide, a technical failure, a management error, millions of people, hundreds of kilometers from the dam itself will feel the consequences. History shows that major infrastructure projects often lead to unforeseen consequences. The Aswan Dam in Egypt changed the ecology of the entire Nile. The Three Gorges Dam in China affected the region's climate and caused local earthquakes due to the reservoir's weight. The Aral Sea practically disappeared due to water withdrawal for irrigation. And these were projects that at least partially took environmental consequences into account. The project is being implemented under conditions of complete opacity. Nobody knows what precautionary measures have been taken. Nobody knows what scenarios have been calculated. In a few years, the dam will begin filling with water. A gigantic reservoir in the heart of the Himalayas will become reality. And one can only hope that Chinese engineers have accounted for all risks, that the dam will withstand an earthquake, that no catastrophic landslide will occur, and that the management system will work correctly in a dangerous situation. Because the price of error here isn't measured in millions of dollars. It's measured in the lives of people who live hundreds and thousands of kilometers from Tibet, and don't even suspect that their fate may depend on decisions made in distant Beijing. Is this a brilliant project of the century, or a ticking time bomb? Time will tell. That's all. If this was interesting, please like it and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss new videos.